What is up everybody and welcome back to the second episode of the Filmmaker's Guide for your smartphone. This is a seven part series where Joshua and myself will walk you through our process of making a short film all on a phone. Now, obviously you can shoot an entire video with no accessories, handheld, the built-in lenses, just your phone. But there are a lot of great accessories out there that let you achieve certain shots or make your footage on your phone look that much better. So, this is what we're planning to use. All right, so let's start with the core piece of gear, your phone. This can be a phone, a tablet, like an Android, Blackberry, iPhone, you name it. Nowadays, just about any phone can film in 4K and high quality. So the point is use whatever device you have or ask a friend. So these tips should apply more or less to whatever device you own, but let us know in the comments below what phone are you filming with? So yes, the obvious thing, we will be using our Moment lenses, particularly Caleb and I want to use anamorphic lenses. And so we have two options. We have the gold flare anamorphic or the blue flare anamorphic. We chose the gold flare anamorphic just because it has a much more neutral tone, a warmer flare versus the blue anamorphic, which is sometimes catered to like sci-fi and our story isn't catered to that. So this was a better fit. And it's actually nice to have two options to have blue or gold. But some of the reasons why we want it anamorphic, it gets a much more cinematic look and feel, meaning you have a much more wider aspect ratio. You'll have gold anamorphic flares, hence the name, as well as distortion, um, unique bokeh in the background, all the benefits of anamorphic on your phone, which is pretty awesome. Now on the flip side, we're gonna be using our macro lens. This is gonna give you a totally different perspective. And it's gonna be kind of fun to try to blend in how this macro is gonna fit with the anamorphic. So we do have to crop a little bit in post to give it the same aspect ratio, but to have these super detailed shots, I think it's gonna be really interesting to kind of blend that into our film. Quick example with the macro lens. Built-in diffusion hood not only acts as diffusion when you're up close, but it also is your focal plane. So you actually need to be this close to the subject for it to be in focus because of how this macro lens works. So you just gotta be almost touching it. So it's pretty nice actually to have it as a guide. Art, dude. Straight up art. So side note, if you do have a phone that we don't make a case for, like the Sony Xperia 1 Mark II, we do make a M-series lens mount that allows you to attach any of our lenses to the phone. So now you can shoot beautiful anamorphic footage with the Sony Xperia 1 Mark II. And a huge shout out to Sony Xperia for being the sponsor of this video. And let me tell you a little bit about it. This phone is kind of insane. It has 4K 10-bit internal recording, 4K up to 124 frames a second, also a hybrid electrical stabilization system, and the same color science as the other Sony Alpha cameras. That is crazy. What I also like is the interface. It's actually fashioned after the Sony Venice Cinema Camera, which is Sony's highest end cinema camera, if you didn't know. This gives you control over frame rates, ISO, and shutter angle. This thing is packed with a ton of features and something to keep a lookout for. So again, thank you Sony for sponsoring this video. Next up in our kit is a variable ND filter. And in my opinion, this is that one piece of gear that's probably gonna make your phone's footage look the most cinematic. Let me explain. There's a rule in filmmaking called the 180 degree rule and whether you choose to follow it or not, that's up to you. But the 180 degree rule basically means setting your shutter speed at double your frame rate. So if your frame rate is 24 frames per second, which we choose to shoot in most of the time, um, you want your shutter speed to be set at 1 48th. And the reason you want this is because it's gonna give you that natural, organic, smooth looking motion blur anytime there's a lot of motion in your frame. So see my hand here? The edges are blurring a little bit because this camera that's filming me is set to 1 48th. Um, if you were shooting at 30 frames per second, you would want it at 1 60th for your shutter speed. So here's where the variable ND filter comes into play. Basically on a phone, since there's no aperture control and there's not a lot of exposure control, you can control your shutter speed, some ISO adjustments, 
but if you're in bright conditions and you want that 1 48th shutter speed, there's no way to get proper exposure if it's you know sunny outside or you're under some harsh light. But with a variable ND filter, think of it as sunglasses for your eyes. You can put it over the lens, then you can adjust the intensity of it, bringing that exposure down. So if you're outside and it's fairly bright, you throw the variable ND filter on, and then you're able to get that nice smooth looking footage, even in brighter conditions. If you don't have access to a filter like this, that's okay. You can crank up your shutter speed. Your footage will just look a little bit more choppy whenever there is motion. Um, or you can choose to shoot in, you know, that blue hour, early morning light, late evening light, when 1 48th is the actual right shutter speed to get your exposure nice and even. So there's definitely workarounds around it if you don't have a filter, but my recommendation on gear is grabbing one of these for your kit. All right, so let's talk about the next piece of gear that you are going to need for your rig for your phone. And it's a mount. It's simply a mount that allows you to attach and secure your phone to whatever device, tripod, gimbal head, you name it. This is gonna be very essential. Now you might have some of these laying around that you pick up over years. I personally like to use the Beast Grip phone mount. This thing is literally a beast. This is a fully metal mount, which has a little bit more weight and heft to it, but it's super secure once you clamp down and you tighten the fastener. It also has five quarter 20 mounts, so it has really a limitless ability to attach other accessories, magic arms, you name it. Um, it has two cold shoes, and it's just a really solid build of a mount, and I really enjoy using it. The next is the Joby head mount. Now there's two options. This is the original option that I have, and we also have the pro option, which has a cold shoe mount on top. This allows you to rotate your phone vertically with this twist of the knob so it record vertically for your films. And then lastly, if you want to have some fun with different types of accessories, we make our MagSafe mounts. These are incredibly useful, easy to use, super secure if you have our MagSafe case uh, for the iPhone system. Again, this is a super convenient option to have uh, if you need a tripod as well as the mount and a mic or a light, easy to use setup and you're on your way. Next is a tripod. Tripods are one of those things that often get overlooked because they're not that cool. They don't do anything super flashy, but they are, in my opinion, like the foundational piece of gear for your camera or for your phone. Um, it might sound obvious, but tripods allow you to just set your shot down, focus on good composition, let the subject or the action play out in the frame, and the shot is just nice, nice and composed. So for our film specifically, especially because we're shooting on a phone, there's not that ton of depth of field. So good composition is gonna be key and having a tripod is a must in our kit. Feel free to use any tripod you have. Feel free to borrow a tripod if you know someone who has one and you don't, but we're gonna personally be using um, Joby tripods on this shoot because A, they're a sponsor of our film festival and B, I really actually love the Gorillapod. The Gorillapod is that bendy tripod so I can mount it in weird positions on car dashboards, bend it around a tree, grab onto a pole, uh, a lot of endless possibilities with the Gorillapod so that's cool. But we will also be using a standard size tripod as well. Put on that phone attachment, whatever the one you decide to use, because then you're able to just get that height you might need out of a regular tripod, focus on those good compositions, and uh, yeah, tripods are must. Now here's the most important gear that you need to have. It is audio, whether it be on-camera audio or external. Audio will make or break your film. So we decided to use the Shure MV88 for our mic. This is probably the best mobile mic for filmmaking. It connects directly to the lightning jack or USB-C, so iPhone or Android. Using this mic with our Pro app gives you much more professional controls like recording patterns, stereo widths, and presets. All right, I am at arm's distance away. This is what it sounds like with the MV88 Plus. I am here sitting on the back of my truck talking to my phone. Hello, and I uh, hope, hope you're enjoying this video. Leave a like, smash that like button. Okay, and here is that arm's distance without a microphone. You can hear the difference, hopefully. Um, maybe you're hearing some more background noise. Maybe I'm not as crisp, but uh, 
yeah, this is just one example for vlogging for sure. Like I said before, audio is going to be really important to your films. You can do this externally or on your phone, but make sure you have really good, clean audio so we can be immersed into your films. Now let's talk about gimbals and I'm gonna put in our slider into this mix as well. These are kind of the pieces of gear that allow you to get motion in your shot, at least for our film, this is the pieces of gear we're planning to use. So a gimbal is a must. Um, there's great gimbals out there, DJI Osmo, Freefly Movi, um, I am using the Zhiyun Crane M2, and the reason I'm using the Crane M2 is because I found that it actually supports the weight of using a phone, a bigger phone, with a filter and a lens, so that combo's a little bit heavier. The filter on with the lens, on the mount. This is kind of the setup for mounting it. I do have to angle it a little bit or else you see this um, little pin here, but uh, yeah. It also works for like really small mirrorless cameras. I've had the ability to use the Crane M2 now working at moment on a, a couple different cameras and anything that's really small and light, it works perfect for including phones. So the Crane M2, I, th there's probably other gimbals. You can mount your phone to full size gimbals if you already have something for your camera, but gimbals allow you to get just that buttery smooth walking footage and since our film is planning to have some like good running scenes. We want the ability to run with our phone mounted to a gimbal so you're not getting tons of shake. Um, any like time you're driving in a car too and you're having a gimbal filming out the side of a window, it's gonna take away all the bounce and jitters of your car. So I think with gimbals to me personally, walking is great, but if you can get wheels, like if you can ride a skateboard, if you can ride a one wheel, if you can ride something or in a car and use a gimbal, that's gonna give you the most buttery smooth footage. And the slider, the Rove slider, um, I think it's a really cool piece of gear because it just does something that a gimbal doesn't. Those little really planned out micro movements to me look really cinematic. Like a lot of movies you'll see just really slight dolly shots. So I think having that little bit of motion helps a ton. So the one example I got for this video was me grabbing the skateboard out of back, the back of my truck. And I think, I don't know, I, it feels suspenseful pushing in. I didn't really mean for it to feel like so suspenseful or anything. Maybe we can put different music under it and it feels happier. But yeah, having that slider is nice. And the Rhino slider is so small and can, you can control it with your phone. Um, that it just makes it super convenient for shooting. So there we go, that is the gear that Joshua and I plan to use for this short film. I'm really looking forward to it. We're still working out the full script and everything, but we have that general pre-production base idea of what we're gonna do. Now we have chosen our gear based on that idea. So the film is starting to, starting to roll, starting to pick up, and I hope you've enjoyed seeing the gear that we plan to use. Again, all the links for this, these products will be linked in the description. Um, if you have any questions gear specific, we'll do our best to answer them all in the comments of this video. I know there's a ton of different combinations with mics, lights, gimbals, lenses, phones, what works, what doesn't. It kind of can be an endless loop of asking questions, but uh, do a little bit of research. Feel free to ask us um, within that research, but definitely use what you have first and foremost. You don't necessarily need every piece of gear to make a good video. <clears throat> Remember story is king, so spend a lot of time on that. We just had our filmmaker workshop too, so that has a lot of good information from tons of great teachers, and that is available for purchase as well. I'll leave that link in the, in the description. But have a great day, and we'll see you on episode three. The next episode is gonna be all about uh, location scouting and storyboarding. So you're gonna see Joshua actually go scout some locations for our film and then put together a rough storyboard. All right, we'll see you guys soon. Peace.